All right, we're going to get back with some more high energy, another certified trainer coming up on stage, certified turbulence trainer Mike Whitfield, who is uh, going to finish you off in terms of our exercise stuff. He's got some great stuff. He's also, literally, he's one of the funniest guys in the fitness industry in terms of writing. His articles are fantastic, so he's got some sites that he'll tell you about, and it's really, really good, even if you don't have a, an info product, but if you even write to your boot campers, you got to get personality in there. You got to get some jokes, and you got to show the real you in there so that people connect with you. It's really important, and so that even if they are just prospects and they've never been to your boot camp, they feel like they know you, because once they know you, then they like you, and then they trust you. And once you have that KLT factor, then you get more clients. So, Big Mike, let's do it. Right. Testing one, two. Can you hear me? Awesome. Yeah, can you hear me now? <laughs> this weekend is very, very epic for me. Because this is where it all started. Last year, as a matter of fact, last year was in August. Uh, it, was, it was my first time traveling on a plane since like 2003 or 2004. I don't get out much. And uh, I heard that. Oh, who, who was that? Thanks for that. And so it was, it was a big step for me to step out of my comfort zone and come out here. But I just, I knew, I had a non-existent online business. It was nothing. But it's ironic because that's where my passion was. And so I came out here. As a matter of fact, I came to the one-day mastermind the day before the, uh, before the summit. And I, I just, I remember the room specifically. I remember the big oval table. And Bedros and Craig were at one end. And I was at the other, kind of the corner of the table. And it was kind of near the end of the day. There was like five or six other trainers wanting to get their info business going and everything. And I think his name was Craig as well, but he looked at Craig and said, okay, what do you see as far as the trends and what's going to be hot in 2012? And Craig said, you know, a couple things. And one was metabolic resistance training is going to be, uh, be a highly coined term. It's going to be really popular. And you saw what happened with there. And then the second one is he, he pointed, he got his hand, he pointed at me and says, finishers is, is going to be really great. And of course, I'm thinking... But in my head, I'm thinking, oh, my God, I'm so smart. This is going to be awesome. And so I got so excited. I got goosebumps. So I know Bedros talked a little bit about this yesterday, but I actually uh, talked my wife into uh, getting a credit card because we, we literally didn't have the money in our checking account to start the mastermind. So I, I literally I got a brand-new credit card to hop on board, and uh, I am now uh, – two, th two big things have happened. Uh, one, the biggest thing – is my wife was a sixth grade math teacher about four weeks ago, and she is now a stay-at-home mom. So that's, yeah. She, uh, she, I got one son, and she watches Champ. Yes, that is his real name, Champ. Yes, it is awesome. Indeed it is. And so, you know, she, she became a stay-at-home mom, and then also I, I kind of took another leap of faith. I think it was like the end of February, maybe the beginning of, beginning of March, somewhere around there, I decided I went all to, uh, to my one-on-one -on -one clients and said, look, we either have to do web coaching or I have to cut you loose because I, I've stretched myself too thin. I'm not spending uh, quality time with my family. And I am now, I, would, I don't know what the percentage is, but I have one client that I see one day a week, and then the rest of my, my business is online. So uh, it's been a huge, huge, just, I guess, nine months Hadn't even reached a year yet, and uh, it's, it's due to this. And I certainly right now, I think Bedros has left, but I want to take the time right now to thank Craig and Bedros for allowing me this opportunity, for coaching me through this. And, uh, you know, if it wasn't for this weekend last year, I wouldn't be on this stage, without a doubt. So, huge weekend for me. But what I want to talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, is how to deliver better and faster results with metabolic workout finishers. Um, first thing I want to do is talk about the people that have influenced me. Uh, Jason Ferrugia, as most of you I think know, uh, there, there was a program, from what I understand, he actually took it down, but it's called Triple Threat Muscle, and that program had a big impact on as far as my obsession with finishers. 
And then most of y'all saw this guy yesterday. That was the first time I've seen him present. I've been following him for, for five years, Alan Cosgrove. And I was just, the whole time I was thinking, this, it's Alan Cosgrove. And uh, he's, he's got such a unique way of presenting information. And I did not know he was Scottish. I had no idea. I had bought another product that is since, you know, it's no longer on the market, but I had bought Warp Speed Fat Loss. And it was a uh, joint project that he and Mike Russell, uh put together. Mike Russell did the nutrition in, and then Alan wrote the, the, uh, the program. And it's a, just a very comprehensive 28-day program. You, you, you know, lose as much fat as possible in 28 days. And, of course, when you got the, uh, got the product, you got to get the audio series. And in this audio series, there is this girl that was training for, I can't remember if it was a half marathon or a marathon, and she said, look, you know, I, if, as long as I stick to the same nutrition principles in the program, can I tweak this program so that it matches my marathon training or half marathon training? And up to that point, there was only nutrition questions. And so Mike said, you know, that's a good question. I'll leave that up to Alan Cosgrove. And there's this dramatic, you know, just pause. And I thought, oh, he's about to speak. And I was driving. I, I bought the, the program at the gym. and I put it on a CD and I was listening to it. And I was, I was thinking this, this dark, raspy, authoritative voice because the only picture I've ever seen is bio picture in men's health. It's that black and white one. I don't know if you guys have seen that. And all of a sudden, it's just quiet. And all of a sudden, it's, don't tweak this program. <laughs> this program is designed to burn off as much fat as possible in 28 days. <laughs> We've already tweaked it. I knew he was a guy to follow from that point. So now, every time I read a, a Facebook status or get a newsletter from him, I have to read it in that voice. I can't even avoid it. And then last but not least, <laughs> yes, this guy, Greg Ballantyne. That, that's actually his, his uh, alter ego, Greg's Ballantyne, but that's another story. But uh, those three guys have been a big influence on uh, my obsession with finishers, and especially this program right here. It's the uh, 31 interval training workouts that he put out, I think it was like two years ago. But that had a big impact on not only my obsession with finish, finishers, but also gave me some uh, really cool ideas. And I actually recommend you not only get this, but find other products in your niche and buy them. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and see what they have to say and get some ideas and get inspired. All right, this is me... Uh, Last night after eating at Fred's Mexican Grill, <laughs> uh, that was me at close to 300 pounds. I don't know the exact number. I think like, here's, here's the thing is I weighed myself about a week after I started, I, and I know I probably shed like five to seven pounds that first week, but after that first week, it was like 297. So uh, here I was at almost 300 pounds, and this is the reason why I got into the fitness industry was because I knew if I could go from that to this, anybody can. Isn't that baby hot? I know, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I came back to the hotel and did six minutes of a finisher and bam, it's crazy. <laughs> Any questions? Um, yes, yeah, that's, that's my son, Champ. That was uh, this vacation last year and I've lost 105 pounds. And uh, more importantly, thank you, appreciate it. Uh, more importantly, I've been able to keep it off for the most part. Um, you know, five pound window around Christmas, but uh, for the most part, I've, you know, I lost 105, and this, this is what got me excited about sharing my story with people, because when, when somebody can look at me and, say, and see that I've lost 105 pounds, well, shoot, I can lose 20 if this guy can lose 105, because my diet, I won't get too much into it, but I'm guessing it was in the neighborhood of eight to 10,000 calories a day, um, and I'm just guessing. But, you know, one, one of my habits was for dinner, I would take a bag of chips out of the pantry, usually Doritos, and as I was deciding what to eat for dinner, I would walk around the kitchen eating the Doritos. I knew I was going to eat a Totino's pizza in the freezer, but I wanted to pretend I didn't know because I would eat the Doritos as well. So I'd eat almost a full bag of Doritos, a frozen Totino's pizza, and then I would uh, end it with a huge bowl of ice cream. That was just dinner. So... All right, let's talk about what is a metabolic workout finisher. How many of you in here use finishers in your workouts or with your clients? 
That's, that's great. That means the, the word is getting spread. Good. All right, it's designed to be used at the end of a workout, definitely not to be, uh, replace a workout. It uses most major muscle groups, although some can be lower or upper body focused. I would say that this morning's finisher at boot camp was lower body focused for the most part. That was a fun one. Uh, they use incomplete recovery periods, typically no more than a minute of rest. I have written some that the, the shortest rest period I've, I've done so far is four seconds. It's four seconds of rest. It could really vary. Uh, they last a very short amount of time. On the most part, I'd say around six to eight minutes is the average. Very metabolically demanding, lots of big compound movements. And the best part is they can be a big variety of body weight movements, stability balls, kettlebells. As a matter of fact, I just uh, released a product about two or three weeks ago with Travis Stetzel, who is a beast machine. And uh, it, was, it was a lot of the toy finishers. We got to use sledgehammers, tires, sandbags, and things like that. All right, benefits of finishers. One is obviously faster fat loss because you're basically replacing cardio and not only with higher intensity, but you're also using more muscle groups. They can break a fat loss plateau. If somebody has lost 20 pounds and they're looking to lose or, or they kind of hit a wall and uh, they've gone three or four weeks without losing anything, they can certainly help with that. They take a fraction of the time that takes cardio or even intervals. Intervals can take, you know, by the time you warm up and everything, you're looking at anywhere between 18 to 22 minutes. This one is a big one for me, improved conditioning. This one, when your clients can go up and down the stairs in their house with no problem, and they used to breathe really heavily, that's a big accomplishment. Because, and I guess I can relate to that because that's how I used to be. I used to go up and down my stairs, and I would, just, I would get exhausted. As a matter of fact, when I first started working out and losing weight, I remember walking one track or one lap around my track at my old high school and being exhausted. So that one's a big one. And then, of course, they make you appear awesomer than you really are. All right, what's the best part? They can be used with any workout program. That's what's really great. Whether you are on a upper, lower split, total body, a turbulence training program, a John Romanello program, they can be used with any workout program. Here's why I started to use them. I would actually train my clients and of course, their intervals were to be done on their own. And they were, for the most part, this is when, this was back when I was training in the morning. And then I come back at night and train again. Some of my clients, they couldn't get to the, you know, to the bike or the elliptical or to the treadmill. Because at night, the gym that I trained at was very busy at night. So they couldn't get to, uh, to do their intervals. And then B, if they were, you know, if they happened to be able to do their intervals, they were getting bored and burned out. Even when I trained or changed up their interval training every four weeks, they still found themselves just wanting something different. So this is kind of the evolution of, of my finishers. Uh, I'm going to use Leslie as, as an example because she's one of my favorite uh, coaching clients. But I said, okay, Leslie, you're tired of doing uh, intervals. Here's what I'm going to have you do. At the end of your workout, I want you to do a circuit of body weight squats, inverted rows, and push-ups. And I want you to do 10 reps of each and then rest 30 seconds. And I want you to do that three times. Not bad, right? But then we have cool ones like this one, the decline of the Bulgarian's finisher. One of my favorite things is actually naming my finisher, but um, I want to go through this one because I, I, people always ask me, what's your favorite metabolic finisher? And I always go back to this one. This is actually one of the, one of the first ones I created for my, uh, for my main manual. But this is when you do Bulgarian jump squats. You do eight on each leg then you immediately go down and do eight decline push-ups. Then you go back and do seven reps of the decline, or the uh, Bulgarian squat jumps, and then go back and do seven decline push-ups, and you just work your way until you complete one rep of each exercise. I will say this, the Bulgarian jump squat is a very advanced movement, and so I wouldn't recommend that unless you have a very advanced client or athlete. Otherwise, just stick with just plain Bulgarian squats. Always start conservative. So that's kind of the evolution of my finishers. I've gotten a little more uh, compli or complex as far as rep and set scheme. And I didn't do this. My wife did. Oh, good. I'm glad we skipped it. Yeah, she, 
I had a little blur at the bottom. As a matter of fact, she did like the whole fire border and stuff. She got a hold of my PowerPoint. All right, these are, uh, these are just a few of my clients that have had fantastic results using finishers with their programs. But the cool thing is they didn't do any cardio at all. This is just metabolic resistance training and finishers. Um, so this is, this is Nancy, starting off with her. She's, a, she's now a certified trainer, which is really cool. And on top of that, she not only lost 32 pounds, but she had, uh, also has dropped another 13 on top of that. All right, this is Philip. He's actually one of the winners from the TT contest. Lost 34 pounds in 12 weeks. I told, I told Philip when I met with him, when, uh, when he entered the contest, or when I kind of made him enter the contest, that's one perk about a TT trainer. How cool is that? You can, you can have a client and say, hey, look, if you train with me, you have a chance to win $1,000. All you have to do is submit their email, and that's, and that's it. But I told Philip, I said, I want you to accomplish two things. One, I want you to lose 20 pounds of fat over the course of these 12 weeks. And, of course, he beat that by far. And the second thing I wanted him to do is I wanted him to get the most amazing farmer's tan known to man. And he was able to do both. So I was really proud of him. You can see the V and everything. It's outstanding, Philip. Way to go, buddy. And that's Darth Vader. I put him on a finisher program. He lost 72 pounds and was able to beat up an Ewok. Nice job, Darth. And this is Robin. Uh, Robin is either 47 or 48. She's totally cool with me sharing that because I asked her. But, uh, and she's, she's come a very long way. As you can see, she lost... 50 pounds and 15% body fat. And here's Amber, another winner of the TT contest. She got first place. She, uh, I have an interesting approach with her um, as far as diet. She gets bored with diet programs, kind of like with workout programs. So I, I literally changed her diet approach every four weeks. She started off with Brad Pilon's 24 uh, hour fast for the first four weeks, and then she did cheat your way thin the second eight weeks, or the second four weeks, and then the last four weeks, honestly, I can't remember. I think it was like a 16-8 intermittent fasting, and uh, she lost, I can't remember how many pounds of fat. I think it was like 16 pounds of fat, something like that. So she did really well. All right, finishers versus cardio. Unfortunately, when I went to the gym, I saw most people doing at least 45 minutes, up to 60, 65, 70 minutes or more, whereas finishers, as I said earlier, can take as little as six to eight minutes. So they don't take long at all. All right, finishers versus cardio. Cardio, as you know, I think Alan Cosgrove has talked about this as well. It's the same repetition over and over again on the same muscles. So, you know, when I think cardio, I think people on the treadmill. That's just how I think. And that means they're just constantly doing this for an hour. And none of their other muscles are getting involved. Plus, as you and I both know, just on the, uh, the science, there's less calories burned with regular cardio. Now, obviously, with finishers, you work more muscles, plus you spread the exertion and the energy over the entire body. And, of course, there's more calories burned because, obviously, they're more intense. And, of course, when there's more muscle involved, there's more calorie burning. All right, finishers versus intervals. Um, as Craig talked a little bit about that this morning, um, with intervals, you know, you can obviously you can replace intervals with finishers. Now, with intervals, just like cardio, you're doing the same repetition, leading to overuse injuries, and it also requires cardio equipment. And of course, can take by the time you put in a warm up, because even if you're just doing sprints, you still have to warm up those legs to be able to take on sprints without, of course, pulling a hamstring and that kind of thing. So you're looking at 20 to 25 minutes with intervals, whereas finishers, they work more muscle. Just about, like I talked about earlier, spreading the energy and the exertion over the entire body. And then these can be done with very minimum equipment, if none at all, and body weight. And of course, like I said, finishers can take just a fraction of the time as well. All right, how to tailor a finisher with your one-on-one -on -one clients. First thing you can do is add or reduce the number of rounds or supersets or circuits. Okay? So if there's a finisher that either you create or got one from my manual and it's four rounds, two things you need to think of. One, is this person going to be able to take four rounds, so don't be afraid to reduce it. And then two, whenever you do 
a finisher for the first time with a client, I recommend doing about half of the number of reps that it calls for. So if it says, you know, four rounds, I recommend just doing two circuits, okay? Next thing you do is increase or decrease rest periods. I think a lot of people underestimate the power of a rest period. There's a big difference between 20 seconds of rest and 30 seconds of rest. So obviously if your client you know, is struggling through, don't be afraid to increase the rest period. And of course, you have, if you have like an athlete, you can, uh, you can decrease the rest period. And then last but not least, exercise substitutions. I know Craig talked about you know, replacing the, uh, the jump squat with a total body extension and things like that. There we go. Oh. All right, this upcoming finisher will get your muscles twitching. Therefore, the 99 problems, but the twitch ain't one finisher. Brilliant, right? <laughs> All right, this is one round, needless to say, but it's 33 jump squats, 33 decline close grip push ups, 33 kettlebell or dumbbell swings. And the rest period is really up to you. Now, here's the thing is if you want to add an extra challenge to this, what you could do is tell your client to do this finisher and then, the next, and then, of course, record the time that it takes to get it done. And then the next time they perform this finisher, try to beat your previous time. It's a really good way to just kind of keep your clients mentally engaged with their workouts and, and things like that. Now, obviously, jump squats, you can replace those with total body extensions and things like that. Yeah, that's me and a cow to take up some extra time in case I was talking too fast. And now I'm talking about it. And now I'm going to go to the next slide. Whoa, hello. Okay. Um, kind of went too fast here. Oh, there we go. All right, how to use finishers with small groups and boot camps. I know we talked about this earlier, but definitely make sure that you uh, replace specific reps with time sets, or you can use the approach that I did this morning with this morning's finisher, and basically you just do as much as you can in that, or that specific number of reps in a certain time frame. Um, this morning, as you, know, as you saw, we did the whole uh, three minutes, and you just do as many rounds as you can. That's another tactic you can use, and of course, offer exercise substitutions. So, this is the, uh, the same finisher, but I basically, utilized it as a boot camp or small group style. So now you give them the option of either jump squats or total body extensions. And now instead of specific reps, you're just gonna have them do as much as they can in 40 seconds. Same with the decline close grip push-ups. We give them the option of doing normal push-ups. And then last but not least, the, uh, the kettlebell swings. Of course, you can keep those the same. So everything's time sets. And as you can see, you also offer exercise substitutions. All right, the three factors in choosing the right finisher. One is your recovery ability. Let's say, for instance, you're on an upper lower split and you do upper body on Monday, lower body on Tuesday, and you repeat that for Thursday and Friday. So if you do your upper body on Monday, you could technically do a lower body finisher so that way you hit all major muscle groups. However, if you find yourself the next day kind of sludging through your lower body workout, then you know that that's not the right finisher. Because the, the finisher is kind of like, look at your main workout program, the metabolic resistance training program, as the foundation of your house. That's, that's the concrete slab, okay? The finisher basically just makes it look better. It's the, it's the pretty doorknobs. It's the curtains on a house, things like that. So you want to make sure you have your foundation in place first and then the finisher. So keep that in mind. So another approach too is knowing that you don't have to hit your upper body again until Thursday and you're working out on Monday, you can go ahead and just you know, smoke your upper body and it could help with muscle building. All right, number two is your main program. Is you, are you doing a total body or an upper or lower split? Kind of, kind of tying in one and two together. But just keep in mind that if you find yourself or your clients struggling through the main workouts, then that means that it's time to change up their finisher a little bit, and especially if they were getting through their workouts just fine before. 
And, of course, length. If you're doing a 25 to 30-minute workout, then you might be able to do like a 10-minute finisher. But if you're doing a 45-minute workout, then you would probably want to do like a fast, like a finisher we did this morning, that three-minute finisher. This is a slide that my girlfriend slid in. Hi, honey, I miss you. I hope to permit you. Don't eat the garlic place with Daniel. You always get pudgy when you get out of town. Love, Jennifer. Oh, Jennifer. Okay. All right, using active recovery to tailor a finisher to your fitness level. The first one is kind of funny, but at the same time, we're, we're not in the business to make people throw up or feel ridiculously dizzy or anything like that. So that's just obviously, if you're feeling nauseous, it's just you're, you're doing the wrong finisher or, you're, or you know, it's just not the right one for you. So what you could do is use what I call active recovery to get through a finisher. So let's say you're starting off with burpees and then you go into kettlebell swings and then you go into walking lunges. You know, obviously those three exercises are very demanding and it's going to get your heart rate up pretty quick. What you could do is after, say, the two exercises with a client is put in an easier exercise like the plank or the bird dog. Another example is like, a, you know, maybe some jumping jacks. And what that's going to do is that's going to let them kind of get through the finisher because you, totally, you don't want to totally smoke them within 30 seconds of the, of the finisher. So this, that's another tactic you can use with your campers as well as your clients is slide in a what's called active recovery. All right, finishers do's and don'ts. Um, this is, these are some, a couple of slides that I, I added in because I got a good response from my list when I blogged about this. Because a lot of questions that came through is, when should I perform a finisher, when should I not? And so that's what I'm going to go through right now. Um, obviously, you do not want to perform a finisher before strength training or metabolic resistance training. Because that's going to impact your ability to get through your main workout. It's kind of like the same, same lines as you typically don't do intervals before your main workout. I mean, there's a time and place where you want to change it up, fine. But for the most part, that's the, uh, that's the rule to stick by. Uh, you do perform them after your main workout, but never, ever before. Just reiterating point one. And then do not perform them after a conditioning workout because you won't be able to give your finisher the best effort. What I mean by that is how many of you in here are familiar with the May 2011 MR, or metabolic resistance training, uh, Craig's original metabolic resistance training program? Okay, just a few of you. All right. It's... Uh, it's a very, very good program. I've, I've used, used it with several of my clients, but it's broken down into four workouts. So workout A is, is uh, metabolic resistance training and strength, okay, and kind of the moderate to heavy lifting. And then workouts, and that, that's workouts A and C. Now B and D, they're more of conditioning. It's like, if I remember, I think it's like 10 exercises in succession, a lot of body weight stuff, a lot of high rep stuff. So when you would not use a finisher is after those conditioning style workouts like B and D in that program. Because metabolic conditioning and metabolic finishers are very similar. The finisher is obviously a little, a little more intense and typically the rest periods are much shorter. But to perform them back to back, is your, your nervous system can't, just can't adjust to it. And it's just, it doesn't complement each other really well. So keep that in mind. Uh, they can be used, I just talked about this yesterday, uh, they can be used to replace interval training, but not replace your main workout. One question that I, I've gotten a lot from both trainers as well as readers is, can I use finishers on my off days, you know, just kind of keep myself going? And at first, I used to say no. It's just not smart, because that's not how I did that with my clients. But I had a couple of clients try it out, as well as readers, and they're saying that doing their finishers on their off day hasn't really interfered with the recovery, and they said that they, it keeps themselves kind of mentally engaged with wanting to do something every day, which is fine. For me, I'd rather just work out three or four days a week, and then the other days just stay active by going for a nice walk or something like that, but everybody has their own preference. And now we're to questions. Zip through that. Wow, I zipped through it. I talked fast. I knew I wouldn't. Oh, well. Questions? Everybody's scared of you after this 
morning. <laughs> uh, workoutfinishers.com. And then if you want to um, like me on Facebook, I uh, do like, you know, Q&A and things like that. It's uh, facebook.com slash workoutfinishers. So no question. Yeah. Come up to the mic, though, if you don't mind. Hi. Hey. <laughs> I'm Michelle. Um, actually, I just want to know what mindset you got into when you lost all your weight and how you, how you changed. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. I get that a lot. I'm glad to, to cover that. I had an aha moment in December of 2002. And what had happened was I was playing PlayStation. I was playing Madden. And you imagine that. I was a big guy and eating chips and playing video games. And what had happened is, to this day, I still think the computer cheated, but I threw an interception. I mean, I was throwing a bomb, and the linebacker intercepted it. Like 10, I was like tossing like 40 yards, and then he intercepted it like 10 yards in. I'm like, whatever. So I threw the remote down, and when I went down to go pick up the controller, I looked down, and I saw just all this belly fat, and I saw this person that I, I literally did not recognize. And so I decided right then and there, of course, I was also real. I didn't want to start right then and there, but I knew I would start in January, and I wanted to start on the New Year's bandwagon. So I knew that next year I was going to start a new regiment, and sure enough, I had a goal of hitting uh, 50 pounds six months later, and I lost 75 pounds in six months. So, it, and of course, the rest is history. I've lost another, another 30 since then. So that was, that was my aha moment, and that was my mindset. Anybody else? Bring it on. So who are your mentors when it comes to improving and building your humor? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I, I think another good resource is uh, if you guys don't follow John Romanella, he's a funny guy. He's really funny. And that's, that's one guy. And I would say I, it's hard for me to be serious. And, I mean, as you can say, I, I'm kind of weird, too, because you saw during the slides, <laughs> several of them were no hitters. But I uh, <laughs> need to work on that for next year. <laughs> Jennifer Aniston, come on, that was hilarious. But... The, the one thing I look at is I don't think fitness has to be so serious. And so, obviously, I write a lot better than I do uh, presenting on power slides. But when I do my writing, I like to splash in humor because I think if people are more laid back and enjoying and laughing at themselves and laughing at me, including I make fun of my, my, you know, myself, I just think it, it kind of put, it eases the pressure and makes them realize that I'm human and I make mistakes. And uh, I just think that, you know, just constantly just being myself. And I guess I get most of it from, uh, from my dad. So, But John Romanella is a, is a good person to follow as far as if you want to put humor in. He's a really, really funny writer. So he's been a big inspiration for me.